Hey, hi, Girl Scouts. My name is Flask, and I'm a volunteer with the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains. Today, I'm going to show you how to make two simple sundials that you can use to tell time by the sun. In ancient times, before we had clocks, we could tell time more or less by the position of the sun in the sky. And you can do that two ways. You can do it by observing the sun against your landscape, and you can do that by observing the shadow that things make when the sun shines on them. Um, but that takes a lot of continual observation. You have to keep going out and observing. And eventually we discovered that mathematics will take care of a lot of that work for us. Let's talk a little bit about why a sundial works. I've taken this ball, it's, it's got a smiley face on it, but I've marked it with a North Pole and a South Pole as if it's our Earth. And I've put the equator on and I've drawn in these two lines which are halfway between the North Pole and the equator and the South Pole and the equator. And so that the North Pole is 90 degrees north latitude and the equator is zero. So if you're doing your math, you know that this line here is 45 degrees north latitude. Latitude is just the measurement of how far north or south something is on the globe. To show how the shadows work with the globe and latitude, I've taken a little toothpick and stuck it in at about 45 degrees latitude. And I'm going to use this flashlight to represent the light of the sun. I don't know if you can see this, but as I rotate the ball, the shadow of the stick doesn't just move, but it gets longer and shorter. And that's what's happening when we're watching the shadow of the sun on the ground or the shadow of the sun on a plate of a sundial. Longitude is where you are this way around the globe. But for a sundial, you only need to know where you are this way, latitude. Everybody in our Girl Scout Council lives somewhere between 42 degrees north latitude and 45 degrees north latitude. I live at 44.5 degrees north latitude, which is farther north than most people who are in our council. And if you don't know what your latitude is, your sundial will still be pretty close. But if you want to know what your latitude is, any handheld GPS unit will tell you what your latitude is as part of your location. And the GPS in a smartphone works just fine if you have one of those. You can use a desktop computer to look at an online map and look at where you live and then um, search to see what your latitude and longitude are. So once you've looked up your latitude and you know what it is, you're ready to make a sundial. You're, uh, there's a lot of math you can do, but I've found some things that um, you won't need to use the math. So let's look at the sundials that I've made. This is a horizontal sundial. When I put this down on the ground with this part, this is called the gnomon. That's a great word, gnomon. When I put this down on the ground with the gnomon pointing true north, and if the gnomon is this angle here, if that matches my latitude, 44.5 degrees, when I put it down on the ground, the shadow will fall on the correct hour. This kind of sundial is called an equatorial sundial because instead of making all the hours the lines for the hours, different distances apart on the circle. They're all evenly spaced, but to make this work properly, the face of it has to be tilted so that it's parallel to the equator. And uh, blah, blah, math, math, math. You get, that, you get it to do that by putting the tilt of the face of the sundial at the number of degrees that you are in latitude. And this one, this one only works for pretty close. So if you were, if you live at 42 degrees north latitude, you would kind of, you would fold this template about halfway between 40 and 45. 
but I live very close to 45, so I used the 45 line. So two different kinds, one you lay flat on the ground and one you tilt and then you point the, the pencil part at true north and you'll get the hour. So let's talk about what you need to make these. For both of them, you're going to need a template. And I've put links to the templates in the description. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need some tape. I recommend a ruler, not because you need to measure things, but because it really helps to make your lines, uh, your folds nice and straight. Uh, and if you're going to make the equatorial sundial, you're going to need a pencil and a piece of cardboard as well. Here's a time lapse of me making the horizontal sundial. And here's a time lapse of me making the equatorial sundial. Have them made let's go outside and test them out all right so I've set up my horizontal sundial so that it is facing true north according to my compass and according to my sundial it is about 3 15 in the afternoon and I know from looking at my clock that it's really 4 15 in the afternoon but it's daylight savings time so if you're a smart person you can add one if your sundial isn't completely accurate to the minute, sundials are rarely ever accurate to the minute. And also if you're dealing with paper, they'll blow around or they'll, they'll move. They're not entirely stable, but uh, they'll be pretty good. They'll tell you the time pretty good. And, but let's look at the equatorial sundial. That's pretty fantastic too. It says it's about quarter past three and we know it's about quarter past four but daylight savings, so you can do that math. Add one. Anyway, that's two different kinds of sundials. So that's it for the sundials. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you enjoy making them and I hope you have a great day.